Okay, good morning. So, as I say, a short lecture, I'm going to give you the what you should have got in Monday and have you do it as classwork instead of homework, but there were a few sort of stray things I wanted to mention. Um, our textbook, and you know, the common core criteria that it's based on, is big on approximation. And that's something we haven't really talked about, but especially when you're adding fractions. Um, you know, adding fractions and getting an exact answer is something that you more or less have to either do on your calculator or laboriously work out pen and paper. Like, if we have seven, and three eighths plus four and a tenth plus five and six tenths plus, let's just make our life a little harder, plus one and a I don't know, two thirds. I mean, to do that addition, you're going to have to get a common denominator. And I've never explicitly talked about adding more than two fractions at the same time, but I mean, eight times 10 times three is a common denominator. So it's not like we can't do the problem. It's just, it's going to be difficult. Or maybe <laughs> difficult isn't the right word. I mean, fundamentally, it's something we can ask a fourth grader to do. It's going to be time consuming and you can't do it in your head is maybe what I'm really trying to say. And what the textbook would like us to, I, I always say the textbook, what the Department of Education would like us to be able to do and like us to be able to present to students is, you know, mental approximation. So we look at this and we say, now well, the seven and the four and the five and the one, those are hopefully not giving us problems. Four and one is five and five is 10 and seven is 17. But what about the three eighths and the one tenth? And the six tenths and the two with third. Well, we're going to, um, as we want to approximate these, and approximation, it's right there in the word, is not an exact science. Um, there are multiple ways we could do with this approximation, but we see the tens and we see the eighths and we say, well, an eighth and a tenth are pretty close, right? I mean, well, I don't have the calculator, so I can't tell you exactly how close, but you know, if I asked you to visually tell me what's an eighth of an inch versus what's a tenth of the inch, probably most people couldn't make that distinction. So if we think that an eighth and a tenth are pretty close, then three eighths is pretty close to three tenths. And we can add three tenths and one tenth and 
96 pence. And two thirds, well, two thirds is six ninths. And a ninth and a tenth are pretty close. So six ninths is pretty close to six pence. And we get 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pence, which is 1 and 6 tenths, or 1 and what? 3 fifths. And again, this is clearly not the correct answer. I mean, this is an approximation I got when I said, well, an eighth is kind of like a tenth if you look at it from far enough away. But if you're trying to add fractions in a real world context and you're just trying to do it quickly, you more or less have to proceed like this because you are probably not going to be able to get common denominators in your head. And you know, a lot of times, something like this, put those together, by the way. A lot of times, something like this is good enough. You know, if we're gathering garbage to, um, to carry to the dump, and those fractions are the weights of bags of garbage. And we say, okay, we've got about 19 pounds of garbage we've got to haul. You know, the difference between an eighth and a tenth in that context is probably not significant. So, that's one thing we sort of wanted to brush over. Another thing, the textbook, well, the textbook doesn't really isolate this as its own lesson, but it then does have like a bunch of homework problems on it. So I figure, okay, that's, this is something we should talk about. Um, and that's, you know, Say, look at this room and how many students, how many people, let's count myself, are in this room. Two, four, six, eight people in the room. And two of us are men, two of us are male. So let's say, let me now scribble that out and say that two eighths, which is one fourth of the people in this room are male. So without counting how, what fraction of the people in this room are women? Three fourths. <clears throat> if one fourth are male and we are, we are excluding binary, um, non-binary or other categorizations, that if a half, that if a fourth of us are men, three fourths of us must be a woman. And this is just the idea that if you take something, in this case, the number of people in our room, and you break it into pieces, all of those pieces have to add up to a whole. All of those pieces have to add up to one. So this is, you know, if you have some bill or some perspective law 
and everyone in the Senate or whatever has to vote for it or against it. Nobody's allowed to sustain, to abstain in it. Then if six tenths of the senators vote for the new law, it's an immediate consequence of that, that the remaining senators, the remaining four pence of the Senate, must vote against it. And, yeah, um, you want, of course, to know this. You want to be, again, a little careful of it. The reason that these fractions have to add up to one is that we're taking a single unit and breaking that single unit into pieces. But this is different, like again, if I have a half of a cookie and someone else has three fourths of a cookie, well, those fractions don't make up one. And the reason that's able to happen is that we don't have a single thing that we're breaking up. We have two things, two cookies, that we're breaking up. So this only applies when we're taking some single unit. The students in this classroom, the senators in the Senate, and breaking them into parts. Other than that, I promised that it would be a brief lecture, and it is. We'll have, um, I said we'd start proportional reasoning today, but that's being put off to Friday.